Genesis chapter 41. This is uh, right in the center of the chapters dealing with the life of Joseph. Uh, I don't want to spend a lot of time on a lot about Joseph. I want to get to the text and to the message tonight. But Joseph is a perfect picture of the type of Christ. Forty-two times in Scripture you find that Joseph is a picture of Christ. There's 42 generations from Adam to Christ. There's so many similarities and so many things about Joseph, uh, how he was sold into slavery and, and all that he endured. Uh, you know as well as I do, he was his father's favorite. We know that his father gave him a coat of many colors. We know that God gave him the ability to interpret dreams. Uh, and God gave him a dream where he would be exalted above his brothers. When he told his brothers, they didn't like it. Uh, they didn't like it because his father favored him. They threw him in a pit. They told his father an animal killed him, took his coat with a bunch of blood on it. His father uh, uh, was in remorse. Then the brothers uh, sold him to some uh, slave traders. They took him down there to Egypt. They sold him to Potiphar, and he, he was uh, esteemed in Potiphar's house, Potiphar's wife wanted uh, uh, to take Joseph into her, you know, for herself. He refused to uh, defile himself with her, ran out. She hung on to his coat. She told a lie on him. Potiphar sends him to jail. While he's in jail, he interprets a dream for Pharaoh's baker and butler. Uh, they said, when we get out, we'll make sure Pharaoh knows about you. They, you know, one of them got out and was hung. The other one got out and went to serve the butler. And then that brings us to chapter 41 they forgot about him. All right, so in chapter 41, uh, let's read here. And it came to pass at the end of two full years that Pharaoh dreamed, and behold, he stood by the river. And behold, there came up out of the river seven well-favored kine, and a kind uh, is a cow, by the way, um, well-favored kine and fat-fleshed, and they fed in a meadow. And behold, seven other kine came up after them out of the river, ill-favored, lean flesh, and stood by the other kine upon the brink of the river. And the ill-favored, lean flesh kine did eat up the seven well-favored and fat kine. So Pharaoh awoke. And he slept and he dreamed the second time. And behold, seven ears of corn came up upon one stalk, rank and good, and behold, seven thin ears, and blasted with the uh, east wind sprung up after them, and the seven thin ears devoured the seven rank and full ears, and Pharaoh awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled, and he sent and he called for all the magicians of Egypt and all the wise men, and Pharaoh told them his dream, but there was none that could interpret them unto Pharaoh. Then spake the chief butler unto Pharaoh, saying, I do remember my faults this day. Pharaoh was wroth with his servants, and he put me in word uh, in the captain of the guard's house, both me and the chief baker. And we dreamed a dream in one night, I and he. We dreamed each man according uh, to the interpretation of his dream. And there was there with us a young man, an Hebrew, servant of, to the captain of the guard, and we told him, and he interpreted to us our dreams, to each man according to his dream he did interpret. And it came to pass, as he interpreted to us, so it was. Me he restored unto mine office, and him he hanged. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon. And he shaved himself, and changed his raiment, and came in unto Pharaoh. And Pharaoh said unto Joseph, I have dreamed a dream, and there is none that can interpret it. And I have heard say of thee that thou canst understand a dream to interpret it. And Joseph answered Pharaoh, saying, It is not in me. God shall give Pharaoh an answer of peace. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you, Lord, for the good testimonies. We thank you for the good singing. We thank you for being a good God. Now, I pray you'd help us from the Word of God. 
I do pray for those that are watching via live stream, you'd help them as well. I pray that, Lord, you'd bless them that are working with the children on the other side of the building, be with those children. I pray uh, those that have not been saved will be saved uh, at an early age and go on to serve and live for you like we've heard testimony tonight of others. And then, Father, I pray for those working with our teens. You'd bless their efforts. And I pray for those young people. You'd protect them. You'd help them. Lord, all the peer pressure they face. And, God, you'd give them strength and encouragement in their uh, class tonight as well. Help us now to set in heavenly places. Uh, use this unworthy vessel and glorify your name. We'll thank you for it. For it's in Jesus' wonderful name we do pray. Amen and amen. I want you to notice several things about this text. I want you to notice, first of all, the delay. Look again at verse number one. The Bible says, And it came to pass at the end of two full years. Uh, we find that Joseph... Uh, has been in prison waiting for uh, the butler to uh, fulfill his obligation to tell Pharaoh about him, uh, and that day hadn't come. It's taken two years uh, for him to get out of prison. Uh, uh, can I say, a lot of times uh, we think God's forgot about us. A lot of times we think that nobody cares. Uh, but can I help you with something tonight? God knew exactly where Joseph was. Uh, he knew exactly when Joseph needed to come forth, uh, and God orchestrated and arranged that. Uh, as we heard Brit Miss Brittany sing this morning, uh, uh, when he's four days late, he's always right on time. Uh, uh, friend, you may be praying and seeking God on something. Uh, Brother uh, Kevin, you may, you're praying for your mama, 91 years of age, uh, and you've been praying for some uh, uh, 12, 15 years for her to get saved. It hasn't happened yet. Uh, don't give up. Uh, don't give up on our God. Uh, uh, don't quit, friend. Uh, 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 it may not happen in the timetable you think it should happen. Uh, just keep trusting God. Uh, keep abiding faithful. Uh, keep being a light. Keep being a witness. Uh, keep doing what you can do and wait and watch and see what God's going to do on the other end of this thing. Uh, we see the delay. Now we notice the dreaming. Pharaoh dreams two dreams in these verses. Uh, uh, from verse number one it says uh, uh, that Pharaoh dreamed. Uh, and it goes on down all the way down to verse seven. He's dreamed two dreams. Uh, and uh, they're disturbing him. Now, let me just, I always have to qualify this because I've had people say, Preacher, I had a vision. People, I had a dream. Well, quit, quit eating spicy food before you go to bed. You'll quit having them visions, all right? God doesn't speak through dreams anymore. Right. Back then, they were not indwelled with the Holy Ghost, and they did not have the Scriptures. God speaks to us through His Word. Amen. He doesn't speak through any dreams, all right? Uh, don't come tell me your dream and ask me what, what what all that means. I'm going to tell you it means you've got to give more money to the to the building fund. That's what I'm going to tell you, all right? Uh, no, I'm not going to tell you that, but listen, he dreamed. The dreams were for a reason. God was dealing with Pharaoh because God wanted Joseph to be exalted, and that's what will happen eventually out of this whole story, this whole text uh, he gets exalted, and he does rule over his brothers, and he does uh, 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 do great things for his family. But here we find the dreaming. We find the delay. Now notice Pharaoh gets disturbed. Look with me in verse 8. And it came to pass in the morning that his spirit was troubled. He got disturbed. I want to tell you something. God often disturbs the waters in order to bring stillness to the soul. Are you listening? No one ever gets saved until they get disturbed that they're lost. And God convicts people of their sin. And can I say, God does some disturbing. And what may be going on in our country tonight, God may be disturbing America so that America quits looking around and starts looking up to God. Hmm? And God knows how to uh, disrupt people's lives and disturb them to the point where they're so fearful they have to look to God. So we see the disturbing. Uh, now notice the deficient. Look at verse number 8. And he sent and he called for all the magicians of Egypt and all the wise men thereof and Pharaoh told them his dream but there was none that could interpret them unto Pharaoh. Can I say... Right now, there's a whole lot of people with opinions, and there's all kinds of counsel going on. Hmm? There's not a one of them can tell anything that's going to happen tomorrow because tomorrow hadn't come yet. 
but they all got a, got, a, got a statistic or they got a story or they got a thought or they got a reasoning behind what's going on. Hmm? But they're deficient. And the only one that can really help us is the Lord. Hmm? I hope that's why you're here tonight. I kind of believe it is. Uh, I'm just going to trust in the Lord. He's got all the answers. It's impossible for him to lie. He's never to lie to any one of us. And I'm just going to trust in him. Everything else is deficient. It may be based on some truth. Jesus is absolute truth. Amen? Sure. And so I'll just, I'll just depend on him and trust in him. Uh, depending on what network you look at, depending on what research you do, depending on which one of the medical experts you listen to, they all got opinions. They all got their slight. They all got their thing. Um, but can I tell you, when you put them all together, it doesn't match. But you can look at the whole counsel of the Word of God and it's congruent to one thing, Jesus is Lord. Hmm? But then notice the deliverance. Look down in verse 12. The Bible says, And there was there an, uh, with us a young man, an Hebrew, servant to the captain of the guard, and we told him, and he interpreted to us our dreams. To each man according to his dream he did interpret, and it came to pass as he interpreted to us, so it was, me he restored unto mine office, and him he hang. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out of the dungeon, and he shaved himself and changed his raiment, and came in unto Pharaoh. For two years he's been waiting for this day, and then he is delivered. This day he's brought forth, and he stands before Pharaoh. Notice some ideology here. He gets called out. What's the first thing he does? He gets cleaned up. And then he stands before Pharaoh. Can I help you? When God saved me, he didn't leave me the way he found me. He cleaned me up. Hmm? And he changed me. And when I stand before him, I'm not the same man that I used to be. Are you listening? And we see an application there. But really what I want to focus on there is in that verse 14, it says this. Then Pharaoh sent and called Joseph, and they brought him hastily out. I want to preach on he brought me out. Hmm? Huh? And no matter where you were, no matter what you was found doing, no matter uh, uh, what the circumstances of your life was, aren't you glad Jesus came by and brought you out? Hmm? Hey, old, uh, old, old Joseph was in a mess. Uh, he's in prison. He's there uh, falsely accused. Uh, I, I, I mean, he's just down there uh, 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 waiting on God. And one day God came by and brought him out. Uh, and I've got good news for you. Uh, hallelujah. One day he's going to take us out of this world. Uh, one of these days he's going to deliver us from everything that we face. Uh, and what a day that'll be. Uh, uh, sometimes it seems like we're in a prison. Sometimes it seems like we're facing uh, uh, more than we can bear. Uh, but I've got good news. One day the trumpet's going to blow uh, and we're out of here. And what a day that'll be, my dear friends. Uh, but I'm glad Jesus will get you out of some things while, while we're waiting on that day, aren't you? Can I say, first of all, Jesus get you out of your dungeon. He was in a dungeon. Huh? He was down in the dungeon uh, uh, for no fault of his own. Now Joseph is a picture of a believer. He's in a dungeon. Sometimes you get bound up. Sometimes you can get chained up. Sometimes uh, 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 you can feel like you're uh, 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 no way out. But I've got good news. Jesus can bring you out of your dungeon. You might be here tonight. Uh, you might have a smile on your face. Uh, uh, you might shake uh, folks' hands. Uh, uh, you might uh, sing the song. Uh, you might shout amen. Uh, uh, you may look on the surface and everything is running well. Uh, but you may be in a dungeon of anxiety or depression or despair. Uh, you may be in a dungeon of something that has got you back bound down uh, where you are uh, on the outside uh, uh, everything looks well but inside there's a prison house uh, I've got good news this might be your day uh, when Jesus delivers you out of your dungeon uh, uh, when those things are broken uh, and Jesus uh, elevates you to a better place uh, he can bring you out of your dungeon can I say this Jesus can bring you out of your ditch yep, hmm? um, listen I'm glad for the holy highway 
I'm glad for this road called straight. It's a narrow way. Uh, I'm glad he uh, 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 found me in my sin and he saved me uh, and he put me on this holy highway, this narrow way. Uh, uh, but I want to tell you something. This narrow way is straight. It doesn't go around uh, uh, a lot of curves. Uh, it's straight. It leads to glory. Uh, but sometimes we can take our eyes off the road, uh, off the captain at the end of the road. Uh, and if we're not careful, we look to the right or look to the left. We may fall in a ditch. Uh, you may slip up. Uh, you may be tripped up. Uh, uh, you may uh, uh, be tempted and fall into sin uh, and you're in the ditch. Uh, but I've got good news. Uh, he comes right by, uh, picks you up out of the ditch. Uh, he'll clean you off. Uh, he'll put you back on the path uh, and he'll head you back toward uh, uh, your face toward glory. Uh, he'll get you out of your ditch. Mm -mm. Listen, I, I've been guilty driving down the road and I'm looking at this over here or that over there Miss Annette's looking straight ahead and she'll say hey because there's a car stopping in front of me and I'm just looking off to you get in trouble when you get to looking to the right or to the left yes, sir. Uh, I haven't been in the ditch but I should have been a few times when it comes to my personal driving but when it comes to my spiritual life there's been times I hit a ditch but I'm glad he comes by and he says that if we'll confess our sin, he's faithful and just to forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Uh, and he'll clean you up out of the ditch. Huh? Uh, what a blessing. Uh, uh, remember when you used to ride bicycles? I know kids today don't know anything about bicycles. I mean, I thought that was a big deal when I finally got a bicycle. huh? And then when I got a 10-speed. Remember 10-speeds? Uh, man, I, I thought that was something. Uh, I got a 10-speed, man. I was cool. Uh, and it's really cool when you learn to ride without using the handlebars. Uh, and you just rode and you just, you know, you didn't have your hands on the way. I mean, it was cool to have a bike. Uh, uh, but you remember when you first got a bike? Uh, 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 back then, nobody had gravel. Uh, nobody had uh, paved gravel. Uh, driveways. Everybody had gravel driveways. Huh? You remember you get out there on that bike they took the training wheels off uh, and you hit the rocks uh, and you skin your knees up. Uh, and then mama was real compassionate. Uh, she'd get that uh, 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 that spray stuff they had uh, 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 and spray it on your knees and it was like pouring alcohol into your, your cut. Uh, and she'd put a band-aid on you until you get back up on the bike. Uh, hey, uh, I'm glad when Jesus comes by. It may sting a little bit having to admit to him, uh, but I'm glad he picks us up, he patches us up, uh, puts us back on the, on the path uh, and says, go back after it, son. What a blessing, huh? Mm. He'll get you out of your ditch. Mm. Uh, what a blessing. He'll get you out of your dungeon. Uh, we ain't got no kids in here. Let me tell you a real stupid story, man. I might have told this one time. I'm going to tell it again. Uh, Y'all remember Starsky and Hutch? Uh, one of them shows Miss Annette watches one of the characters are driving that same car that, that, that uh, whichever one of them had the, the Torino, the red one with the white stripe on it. Uh, this, this is one of these gals in one of them shows Miss Annette watches has that same car. But listen, that was a cool show. And the beginning on the credits of that show when they're playing the theme music and they're showing all the highlights and, and all that stuff, uh, uh, one of them comes sliding across the hood of that car and jumps in on the other side and they go off on chasing bad guys. Hmm? I had a buddy. He's been here to church. His name's Donnie B. Donnie B was a little bit older than me. And he got to drive uh, uh, before I did. And we used to terrorize the neighborhoods. Where's Eddie? You'd loved it, Eddie. He had a 70 dart, the kind that looked like the duster body style. It had the big hood scoop on it. It came with a 340, but he had an uncle that owned a junkyard who dropped a 440 Magnum in that bad boy. That was way too much engine for two teenage boys and for a Dodge dart. You know what I'm saying? Huh? He cranked that thing up. You could feel the frame bending on that thing, huh? <laughs> oh, he's somewhere running around. That don't mean anything to all you all, but he's a Mopar guy. I had to do that for Eddie, huh? But uh, 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 we was we was uh, uh, somewhere and and uh, we was in a hurry. I think we was late for basketball practice or something. He said, "Oh, we got to go." Uh, and so uh, we we uh, started heading, and I did that thing. I slid across the, the hood of that car. I was look cool, man. And that was difficult because it had a big hood scoop, man. I slid right past that thing, flew open that door, jumped in, had my feet in, had my hand on the door, my other hand on the top of the roof. By that time, he'd already cranked it up, and he's peeling out backwards. And I'm surfing. 
Slurski and Hutch didn't seem real cool about that time. He looked over and he noticed I wasn't in the car and he did what you and I would have done. He panicked and he locked them up. When he locked them up, it was slow motion. It was <whistles> boom. Thanks be to God, I landed in the ditch. Hmm? Because if I'd landed on the blacktop, it'd have been a bad day. Hmm? It did tear my elbow up. I put a little gauze on it, went to basketball practice, went home, and my mama freaked when she saw how banged up it was. But what I'm trying to say is, it's a bad thing to land in the ditch. You usually land in the ditch because you did something stupid. But thanks be to God, God doesn't let you land somewhere else. He lets you land in the ditch. Are you listening? Hmm? Huh? And he'll come by and get you out of the ditch. Huh? I thought about this. Jesus will bring you out of your darkness. Hmm. Hey, I know we're walking the light as he's in the light. and I'm, I know we're to shine our light. And I am thank God for the lighthouse and all those things. But let's be honest. Sometimes you face some darkness. Sometimes you end up in darkness. Sometimes you're in gross darkness. Hmm? And sometimes you wonder if the light's ever going to shine again. But I'm glad. About the time you're, you're ready to lose all hope, he walks in. Huh? He'll bring you out of your darkness. Huh? I'm glad that he gives a spiritual awakening. I'm glad when we have revival meeting he shows up and you can see him just light in on folks Amen. you can see folks that have just been laying there dormant and you know coming uh, to church with no excitement or enthusiasm in their life and all of a sudden he walks in and he does something for them he delivers them from that what a blessing when God brings you out of your darkness Amen. I thought about this he'll bring you out of the dumps you ever get down in the dumps I don't know where that phrase comes from but I know what it means uh, walking on your lower lip, woe is me, everything's terrible, uh, nothing's ever good, huh? down in the dumps. Miss Annette's got a good remedy for down in the dumps. She's got these homemade chocolate chip cookies she makes. That'll get you out of the dumps. But I'm here to tell you, sometimes you get in, you get in your life just gets in the dumps. Uh, you, just, you just don't want to be around anybody. You just don't like anything. Nothing makes sense. Everything's hard. I'm glad Jesus will come by and he'll get you out of your dumps. I'm glad when he brings you out. Aren't you glad when he brings you out? Hmm? Yeah. Then let me say this. He'll get you out of the devil's bullseye. Hey. Yeah. Hmm? Uh, listen to me. Every day that you breathe air, the devil hates you. Sure. But there are some days when the devil gets freed up with other folks and he sets his sight in on you. Now, I believe as Miss Amy testified uh, either day or Wednesday or something, sometimes we give the devil too much credit. Yep. A lot of times the devil didn't make me do it. I did it because I wanted to do it because my sorry no good flesh got involved. Yep. Yep. But can I help you something? There are some days the devil does mess with you. There are some days he wants to jack you up. There are some days he's got you in his sights and he is ready to pull the trigger or let the bow or the arrow fly through the bow. Are you listening? There are some days he's got you in his sights. Yep. And just about the time he's about ready to take you out, Jesus pulls you out. Yes. Hmm? Right. Uh, aren't you glad with temptation he makes a way of escape? Yep. Aren't you glad that uh, uh, the Lord has set an angel charge over you and that there are times when you don't even know the devil's around but the Lord does and the Lord knows when to pull you out? Hmm? I'm glad when he'll bring you out of the devil's bullseye. There are some times it seems like you're dragging that sorry no good everywhere you go. I'll never forget a preacher friend of mine I heard years ago. He just preached a revival meeting down uh, uh, down in the Carolinas, and, and he had about a 13-hour drive home, and he was wore out. He'd preached all week, and he was wore out. And it was one of those meetings where not much happened. You know, it was just a good church revival. Everybody enjoyed the preaching, but there wasn't much movement. 
and he gets in his car and he's headed home. It's you know late and he's going to drive all night and he's wore out and he knows when he gets home he's going to have ju just a little bit of time to sleep and he's got to repack and get ready because uh, 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 this is Friday night and on Sunday he's got to be somewhere else and start another revival and he's just been running this way and he just didn't see much happen. He's wore out uh, and he said uh, 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 along about that time the devil got in the car with him, started telling him what a failure he was, started telling him that, uh, that God wasn't using him, started telling him all kinds of lies. You know Satan's a liar. He's the father of it. Uh, started telling him everything he was doing useless. Uh, uh, started telling him that uh, 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 he wasn't even going to make it home. The devil was going to take him out. Uh, and, and all kinds of lies. Uh, said about that time he puts on the radio uh, and he hears old Mage Jackson preaching. Uh, and he said Mage Jackson was just uh, flinging it down. Uh, and he said uh, some of you are driving down the road uh, and the devil's lying to you. Uh, you need to stop. Open up the door. Tell the devil to get out there are no free rides uh, and this preacher was so low and so discouraged uh, he's just going to believe the man of God he pulled off the side of the road uh, uh, opened up the passenger door uh, said devil get out uh, uh, there's no place for you here uh, there are no free rides uh, slammed the door got back in headed home uh, uh, didn't have any more of that devil on him the rest of the way home uh, the next meeting folks got saved God started moving uh, I'm telling you sometimes he'll bring you out Oh, the devil's bullseye, huh? It'd be a good day for your life and you realize you don't have to let the devil carry you around on your back either. It'd be all right to just run to Jesus and let Jesus take care of that sucker, huh? I'm here to tell you, if the Lord brought Joseph out, he'll bring you now. The preacher, I'm really going through some things right now. I'm sorry. But I got good news. The Lord, He's not only your Savior, He's a deliverer. And He'll bring you out. Just keep looking. Just keep trusting. Just keep waiting on Him. Sooner or later, He's going to come by and pull you out of that thing. And when He does, you let everybody know that it was Jesus who did it. Let's all stand. Brother Ray, you come and get a song of invitation. Baby, tonight you need to come and tell the Lord, Lord, Thy will be done. I'm, I'm in this place, but God, I, I need your help. But... Lord, I, I'm just waiting on you. Maybe you need to come tonight because he's brought you out. You need to come and thank him. Maybe tonight you just need to come tell him you love him. Maybe tonight he's spoke to your heart about something else. You just mind the Lord tonight. Folks are coming. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for the scriptures. They're so rich. And they're so wonderful. Well, Lord, thank you for what you've done for Joseph. We know you're no respecter of persons. You'll do that for us today. Lord, I pray for that one that may be in a deep valley. Lord, I pray you'd grow them in the valley, but I pray that, Lord, you bring them out, that they might bring glory to you. Father, there may be some in the dumps. Bring them out of the dumps. Some may be in a dungeon. Deliver them from that. Lord, some may have already been delivered. Help them, Lord, to be an encouragement to others. Lord, just bless now in this invitation. Speak to hearts. Well, thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. If you enjoyed today's broadcast, head on over to your app store and download the IBC Florence app today, where we have our music, sermons, videos, devotions, and much more. And as always, thanks for listening.